12 now at 11. Your news starts now. Good evening, I'm Amber Worthy. Thanks for joining us for News 12 now at 11. Officials say a chase that began in Fort Oglethorpe ended in Lafayette tonight. Lafayette Fire Chief Stacy Meek says that they were traveling southbound into Lafayette. Meek says it happened around 7.45 p.m. A Fort Oglethorpe officer got out, of his, got out of his car to play stop sticks to slow the suspect's car in that chase. That's when the patrol car then caught on fire at South Main and Lafayette Bypass. The cause of the fire is unknown, but that officer was not injured. The suspect crashed into the yard of Harbors Light Baptist Church on Crane Street. The suspect is in custody and charges are pending in multiple jurisdictions. We are working to find out what happened leading up to that crash. Chattanooga police are investigating a shooting on West 14th Street. A juvenile sustained a non-life-threatening gunshot wound around 6.30 this morning. Chattanooga police say the preliminary investigation determined that the person that was shot was committing an aggravated assault with a firearm against another person. Police say that's when third party witnessed the assault and fired their own gun to stop the assault. Charges are pending against the person who police say was committing that aggravated assault. At the time, charges are not filed against that witness. Agencies across the country participated in the nationwide prescription drug take back initiative today. Hundreds of people brought their unwanted and unused medications to 14 locations across Hamilton County. This location was at the Walgreens on Highway 153 in Hickson and was one of the handful that had a shredder on site so that you could shred those sensitive documents. In Bradley County, the Sheriff's Office reported they collected a total of 109 pounds of medication. They hosted this event with the Walgreens and the Grab Coalition. That stands for Going Respectfully Against Addictive Behavior. These agencies participated in this event to prevent pill abuse and theft. Tensions were high in Shelbyville this morning with both the TBI and local law enforcement in place early in anticipation of competing protests. Forrest Sanders has a recap of today's events. Most of Murfreesboro has felt this quiet and this empty most of the day except for the square. Something that we've seen all over town has been these uh, free speech zone signs that have all the things that people were not allowed to bring inside. These were at a lot of the entrance points into the rally today where people did not know what to expect. The group of counter protesters grew on the Murfreesboro Square, separated by police and two fences for the white nationalists. Only 10 to 15 appeared here at one time. Pretty much they didn't come. <laughs> They came to Shelbyville, but they didn't come. <laughs> so, I mean, it was a lot of utilized resources that were just through the drain. Tensions hit between the two sides a few times. The police were quick to step in. At other points, it was nearly quiet, with the call music from the shops playing on the square. For a few hours, white nationalist group members left. <laughs> Counter protesters were split in their feelings about so few showing up after so much effort to protect Murfreesboro. They closed everything and canceled everything around Murfreesboro today, so it was kind of pointless in the end. I think the fact that they shut it down, I think it was good because they were anticipating. I think it won't really have that much of a long term effect because Mercer is a city that would like to bounce back after like things that happen. I'm not going to say that I'm happy or that I'm disappointed because very rarely is peace this convenient. So here's how this played out. We saw one group of white nationalists on the square until about 2.30, another group that stayed until about 3. At that point, we didn't see any at all on the square. In Murfreesboro, I'm Forrest Sanders, News 4. A state lawmaker says Georgia legislature needs to come up with a statewide framework for how Airbnb and other short-term rental services will operate. Republican Representative Matt Dollar of Marietta introduced the legislation earlier this year that would keep local governments from banning the businesses. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution reports that Savannah has already had placed restrictions for these short-term rentals, which the city def defines as renting a home for less than 30 days at a time. Savannah's regulations include, among other things, allowing these rentals in certain parts of the city and ensuring that no more than 20% of homes in areas such as the historic district are available for rent at a time. As written, Dollar's legislation would repeal the laws Savannah has in place.
There is intense speculation tonight after it was revealed yesterday that a grand jury has agreed to criminal charges in connection with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. CBS correspondent Winnie Gillette has the latest. CBS News has confirmed the federal grand jury hearing evidence pertaining to special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation has approved the first criminal charges. Mueller is investigating alleged meddling by Russia in the 2016 U.S. presidential election and whether anyone connected to the Trump administration colluded with the Russian government. A federal judge ordered the indictment to be sealed. What I suspect, uh, given that the investigation appears to be ongoing, is that Mueller has decided to indict certain individuals in the hope that they will, what we call flip. In other words, that they'll agree to cooperate with the investigation. Renato Mariotti says the most obvious potential targets are former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and President Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, whose Virginia home was raided by the FBI in July. President Trump has denied any wrongdoing and has called the investigation a witch hunt. Russia has also denied the allegations that it interfered in the election. Former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski downplayed the significance of the charges Saturday on Fox News Channel. The speculation is so insane right now. What we should be focusing on are the continued lies of the Clinton administration, the continued fallacies that they perpetuate. The indictment is expected to become public as early as Monday, when whoever is facing charges could be taken into custody. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. The Statue of Liberty in New York has turned 131 today. The official Twitter for the statue posted that, quote, 131 years ago, a copper statue was dedicated in the spirit of hashtag Franco-American friendship and democracy. Happy birthday to our one and only. A local comic book store gave out free comics today for a National Halloween Comic Fest. Epco's Comics, Cards, Games in Hickson participated in, by opening an hour early for their fans. Hundreds of comics were passed out today, both old and new. The comic store is located on Highway.